Balik. Agad-agad. Balik. Nag-guess ko ba? Alam mo ba yung sinasabi mo? Pamilyar ba kayo? Dito? O dito? Ito pa? Ha? Ito? Marami gumagawa niyan. Ipi ka ba? Well, ito ang pag-usapan natin ngayon. Ito yung tinatawag na horizontal construction joint sa beam. Pwede nga pa talaga? Baka pwede naman. Kasi matagal na itong ginagawa ng iba. Okay. Let's find out. Ayon sa ACI, sa aktual na construction, hindi praktikal na magbuhos ng derecho o yung continuous na operation ng magbuhos. Kinakailangan ang construction joint. Please note, ang dami o laki ng buhos ay apiktado ng budget at mixing capacity nito. Dami ng tao sa buhos at ng limitadong oras. So, tandaan natin para sa inspirasyon ng ating mga buhos. Upang mapanatili natin ang tibay at yung tatag ng mga tinatayo nating mga So, ibig sabihin, pwede na putuli ng buhos kung hindi kaya ang isang buhos sa ating mga biga. Eh, ang tanong, saan ba dapat tayong magpuputol ng buhos? Ayon sa structural code, construction joint in floor and roof systems shall be located within the middle third of spans, of slabs, beams, and girders unless otherwise approved by the licensed design professional. Ayon naman sa ACI o yung American Concrete Institute, desirable locations for joints placed perpendicular to the main reinforcement are at points of minimum shear or points of contract lecture. Joints are usually located at mid-span or in the middle third of the span. But locations should be verified by the engineer before placement is shown on the drawings. Joints in girders should be offset a minimum distance of 2 times the width of any intersecting beams. Well, malino po itong nakasaad sa ating structural code, gayon din sa ACI. Pero hindi naman mali kung hindi susundin ni designer ang code kung sa tingin niya ay safe naman at matibay ang kanyang design. Kaya mas mahinang pa rin talaga na magtanong tayo, lalo na sa mga structural engineer. Tandaan, discretion pa din ng ating design professional o structural engineer kung ano ang gusto niyang mangyari sa kanyang design. Ang code ay nandyan as a guide para sa isang structurally safe na building o structure. Siya po kasi ang magpo-confirm kung ano ang dapat natin gawin during construction stage. Kaya na ang mga detalye ay makikita natin sa structural notes. Pero syempre, may mga basis dapat tayo. Tulad nga nitong provision sa ating code at ACI. Tandaan ang bawat construction joint ay maaring maging dahilan ng mahinang dugtungan sa sana ay monolithic na concrete member. Kaya nga dapat located ito kung saan mababa ang stress. Under most gravity loading condition, ang shear stress sa mga plexural members ay mababa sa middle of the span. Base nga sa ACI 318, dapat ang mga construction joints sa mga floor ay within middle third of span ng slab at beam. E kung putulin kaya natin ang mga beam na hindi perpendicular doon sa main reinforcement. Kundi, pahala. Tulad nito. Hmm. Kaya pala. Now, balik tayo ngayon dito. Pwede ba ito? According to ACI Committee Report 224R, horizontal construction joints in beams and girders are usually not recommended. Oh, hindi pala recommended yung horizontal construction joints sa beam. Katulad nito. Teka, 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 teka. Not usually recommended. Hmm. So, ibig sabihin, pwede. At ito ay may prior approval kay structural engineer. So, yun naman pala. So, kung inalaw ka ng structural engineer na gawin yung ganong methodology, pwede. Otherwise, hindi. So, discretion yan ng ating structural engineer kung papayagan niya kung hindi. Hindi yung sasabihin agad natin na mali. Agad-agad, mali. Nag-guess ko ba? Alam mo ba yung sinasabi mo? So, yan tayo eh. Hindi natin alam yung design procedure or yung methodology na ginamit ni structural engineer or ni design engineer. Ngayon, sasabihin mo agad, mali. Marami ang medyo nalilito pagdating dito. Pero, 
Basi kay ECI. So sa statement ni ECI, o pwede pala. Kaya kung mapapasin nyo, di ba, maraming gumagawa. Hindi lang naman dito sa Pilipinas, kundi sa ibang bansa. Or ginagawa dahil talaga hindi lang nila alam. So kaya nga, pinag-usapan natin dito para mas ma-elaborate natin yung issue na ito. At sabi ng iba, hindi po pwede. Sabi naman ng iba, pwede. So kayo, anong tingin niyo? Pwede po ba? Mag-iwan kayo ng comment dito sa ating comment section para mas ma-expound natin yung topic na ito. So, para mas magkaroon tayong awareness sa iba't ibang construction methodology na ginagawa natin. So, maaaring nagawa na natin ito, maaaring hindi pa, maaaring na-encounter natin. So, at least alam natin ang, ang theory or ang mga reasoning behind sa ganitong methodology. Kung sakali nga na inalaw natin ng ganitong methodology, supposing, pwede. So, in case nga na inalaw natin ang ganitong methodology, so, ano yung possible na mangyari sa structure natin under loading. So, in different circumstances, hindi natin ma... mahirap mahirap mag kung anong mangyayari sa ating mga member kung ito ay subjected na sa loading. So, kung titignan, ito yung figure na kung saan meron tayong horizontal construction joint na nag-terminate under the slab socket. At ito naman yung monolithic na quarry. So, kahit sa ating nan, Iba rin talaga ang monolithic pouring ng concrete. Kumpara sa meron tayong kuha. Pero may mga exemption po dyan. So yun po yung dapat natin may tindi. So in addition, sabi ni ACI, so base nga sa kanilang committee report, for being an girder construction where the members are of considerable depth. So yung, ito, yung mga, ito yung mga members na masyadong malalalim yung, yung ating mabigat. Maybe more than 400 mm yung depth ng ating beam. So Hunter recommends placing concrete in the beam section up to the slab socket. Then, placing the slab in a separate operation. So, may nag-recommend. May nag-recommend na isang expert na dapat putulin ang walls ng beam doon sa level ng slab socket or doon sa ilalim mismo ng slab kung ang ating mga beam ay yung malalalim. The reasoning behind this is that tracking of the interface may result because of vertical shrinkage in a deep member if the beam and slab are placed monolithically. So, maaaring magkaroon down ng shrinkage vertically pagka masyadong malalim ang ating mga piga na maaaring mag-result sa tracking doon sa interface ng ating beam at ng ating slab. So, that is the one reason kung bakit pinapayagan yung ganitong klase ng methodology. Pero, alam naman natin na with this procedure, there is a possibility that the two surfaces will slip due to horizontal shear in the member. Kaya nga marami yung against sa ganitong methodology. Pero, ang sagot naman dyan ay, alam naman yan kung meron tayong adequate na shear transfer na uh, gagamitin. So, the main concern in joint placement is to provide adequate shear transfer and flexural continuity through the joint. So, paano natin gagawin yun? So, flexural continuity is achieved by continuing the reinforcement through the joint with sufficient length past the joint to ensure an adequate splice length for the reinforcement. Ang mga designer, pagka alam nilang ganito ang methodology ang gagawin, so nagdadagdag sila ng mga dowel bars. O ito yung tinatawag na nating mga shear bars. So in that case, so magpo-provide si designer ng extra bars na uh, siyang magpo-compensate doon sa shear stress na posibleng ma-experience ng ating structure. Aside from that, Shear transfer is provided by the shear friction between the old and new concrete. Kaya kung makikita ninyo, di ba, yung, yung ito sa figure, meron siyang hindi po pantay yung, yung surface na dugtungan natin. So in that case, magkakaroon ng key yung old concrete at yung new concrete. Although, some experts say that shear keys are usually undesirable since Keyways are possible locations for spalling of the concrete. The bond between the old and new concrete and the reinforcement crossing the joint are adequate to provide the necessary shear transfer if proper concreting procedures are followed. So, kung sabihin po, pwede naman talaga. Basta sundin lang natin ang tamang procedure in concreting operation. But did you know that most designers are considering monolithic pouring of concrete 
especially sa kanilang mga design. Kaya nga kung option natin na puturin ang buhos ng beam sa socket ng slab, first kailangan natin mag-consult kay structural engineer or designer para malaman natin kung po pwede ba yung naisip natin ng methodology. Otherwise, proceed ka na lang sa monolithic pouring ng kongreto para safe ka. And did you know that there are studies regarding this topic na kung saan ay pinag-aralan nila yung, yung possible na behavior ng ating mga beam kung sakali magkaroon tayo ng mga horizontal construction joints. So yun ang kakaalamin natin. According to an article titled Flexural Behavior of Reinforced Concrete Beams with Horizontal Construction Joints, they conducted a study on horizontal construction joints in beams. In their research, 10 simply supported reinforced concrete beams having a rectangular cross-section were cast and tested up to failure under the action of two-point loads. Eight of these beams were designed to contain horizontal construction joints of different number and location in the beam, while the other two beams had no construction joint, which were referred to as reference beams for the sake of comparison of results. All the tested beams have been designed to fail in flexure and had the same amount in type of longitudinal and transverse reinforcement as well as similar concrete properties. The results of this series of tests have indicated that the presence of horizontal construction joints in reinforced concrete beams leads to a decrease in its ultimate loads and increase in its ultimate deflection. The values of the recorded ultimate loads range between 83% to 98% times that of the reference beams, while the ultimate deflection ranged between 102% to 133% times that of the reference beams. Since pare-parehas naman tayong naghahanap ng reference para gawing ebidensya na dapat pa natin gamitin ito o hindi, so... Ito po yung reference natin sa link dito sa ating comment section. So, kindly check na lang yung ating reference na yan. At kung ano man ang inyong makita through that study, so please comment down below para mas ma-expound natin yung topic na ito. At plus malinawan natin yung ganitong klase ng methodology. So, pag mas marami yung nag-aaral, mas marami yung tumitingin, so mas nagiging klaro yung ating pag-uusap, yung ating isa. And don't forget to share yung comment dito sa ating channel. For the sake of arguments and reference, you can check the link I provided in the description below and feel free to investigate and learn additional knowledge regarding this issue. At base nga sa study na ito, ito yung ating conclusion and recommendation. From the experimental investigation on the behavior of reinforced concrete beams containing horizontal construction joints, the following points can be concluded within the limitations of the tests of the current study. 1. The presence of 1, 2, or 3 horizontal construction joint in the reinforced concrete beam under flexure gave respectively a decrease in the value of the ultimate load, such that ultimate load PU was 97%, 88%, or 83% times that of the reference beam. An increase in the value of the ultimate deflection, such that deflection, the ultimate deflection was 108%, 122%, and or 133% times that of the reference beam. Number two, providing horizontal construction joint above, up, or below beams, mid def gave respectively a decrease in the value of the ultimate load, such that ultimate load PU was 96%, 97%, or 89% times that of the reference beam for beams having one horizontal construction joint and 94%, 88%, or 83% times that of the reference beam for beams having two horizontal construction joints. An increase in the value of the ultimate deflection such that ultimate deflection was 102%, 108%, or 114% times that of the reference beam for beams having one horizontal construction joint and 102%, 122%, or 126% times that of the reference beam for beams having two horizontal construction joints. From the experimental results obtained, it is recommended to improve the strength of construction joints using materials in which band strength between old and new concrete is enhanced, or materials with high strength such as CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymer, 
to improve joint strength. So ikaw, anong methodology ang preferred mo? Yung monolithic na repoing ng ating beam and slab? Or so magkakaroon tayo ng horizontal construction joint doon sa soffit ng ating slab? What do you think? So anong tingin niyo? Ano man ang inyong idea? Please comment down below. Give us a thumbs up and support our channel. Thank you. God bless us all.